A team from the Australian Antarctic Division have undertaken an extraordinary scientific quest, completing a 2,300 kilometre round trip to the site of the Million Year Ice Core. Joining us live from the Australian Antarctic Division headquarters in Hobart is Dr Joel Pedro, the lead scientist of the Million Year Ice Core project. Joel, really appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Firstly, just explain for us what exactly is the Million Year Ice Core? Where is it? What do we know about it? My pleasure to join you, Ashley. Um, the, the Million Year Ice Core is a project to recover uh, a record of Earth's climate history uh, that will reach back over a million years uh, into a period of time when, when Earth's climate uh, was in a different state. And, and this year, we've had a huge result in making the first tractor traverse uh, out to the site uh, of, our, of our ice core. So when you talk about r removing the ice core, how big a slab of, of ice are we we talking about here? Talk us through the logistics of that. Ultimately, we want to drill to a depth of, of nearly three kilometres. So the, the side you're looking at here, uh, the, the ice um, is three kilometres, three kilometres depth. It's, it's a long way down. Um, and it will be many years actually of drilling. This, this season, we just sampled the very top of the ice, um, giving us the, the first taste of the chemistry at that site. Um, and really this year was, was the culmination of, of 10 years work um, and in building up a, a new uh, capability, uh, a traverse capability for the Australian Antarctic program uh, to reach deep inland uh, in the Australian Antarctic Territory uh, and do this kind of science um, that's important for understanding Earth's future climate um, and understanding ice sheet stability. This is really in the middle of nowhere, isn't it? It looks like from those pictures that you, you had a team there with you. Tell us a bit about that journey across the icy terrain. How did you actually get there? Sure is. Um, I wasn't on the on the team myself. I'll probably go down next year. Uh, it was a team of, of 10 expeditioners, uh, including diesel mechanics, um, a field leader, electrician, engineers, glaciologist, and a doctor. Uh, they made their way from the coast at Australia's Casey Station. Uh, they climbed up over a place called Law Dome, um, down through a, a, a trench, um, and then up on to the to the Antarctic ice sheet proper, climbing up to an altitude of, of 3,000 metres. Uh, and on the way, um, although you know it looks pretty flat in the pictures you're seeing there, there's there's some parts of, of the ice sheet that they traversed that are that have never been travelled before. Um, they encountered some some big dunes in the snow called Sestrugi, up to half the height of the tractors. They had to work through um, some some rough weather at times. They had some blizzards that they had to, to stop because they couldn't see the tractors um, in front of them. Um, and it took them 19 days uh, to make their way up to the site um, and then a further 20 odd days to get back. So they were out of this team, were out of Casey uh, for, for just uh, over 50 days. Um, and uh, yeah, really, really incredible result for us that that they made it to the side in this in this first year of, of having this new tractor traverse capability. It's actually the the longest tractor traverse um, the Australian Antarctic program has done since the 1960s. What an adventure! How cold did it get? Do you know? The lowest it got was was minus 44 degrees. Uh, so that's you know that's pretty cold. Um, they had good conditions there in, inside the inside the tractors of course inside the living vans but you do need to work outside um you know they need to do checks on their tractors and obviously when we get to the site we were we started the shallow drilling of ice cores um and so you need you know very good gear to be able to work in those conditions and and um you, there's only so long you, you can spend uh in those temperatures Gosh, OK, so I understand these calls, they're now going to be flown back to Australia later this month. How, how do you do that? How do you store them? I assume they need to be kept frozen. Yeah, um, so the, the cores need to be kept below minus 20 degrees. Part of the, the one of our big objectives this season uh, was to, to test um, the cold chain. Uh, by cold chain, I mean, you know, the, the, that transport chain that brings the ice back from 1,200 kilometres inland in Antarctica all the way back to our laboratories here in Hobart uh, without any damage occurring to the ice. Um, and so we were testing that cold chain, uh, including bringing some of the cores back by, by air, um, some back um, to, to the coast, and then some on from the coast uh, by, by plane to Australia. Um, 
and yes, need to be handled very carefully. Um, these cores are from near the top, so they are replaceable. But as we drill deeper, you know, that ice, when we're getting down to ice that's that's new to science, um, below you know, two and a half thousand metres in the ice sheet, and that's that's some years away before we'll reach those depths, then that ice is, is just so precious. Um, so we need to, to have our, our cold chain practices, you know, really tightly locked down. Um, that was part of our, our, our testing this season. So you mentioned that you're you're expecting to learn a lot uh, in terms of how the climate has changed over the years from studying these ice cores. I understand air bubbles play a pretty important role in that. How so? Yeah, absolutely. And, and it's probably good to, to pause at this moment and, and just emphasise um, Australian work in, in ice core science over the last decades that's really been at the forefront of showing that um, you know, the current levels of CO2 in the atmosphere are higher than at any time in the last 800,000 years. Um, and they're rising orders of magnitude faster than at any time in the last 800,000 years. Um, and also work um, between CSIRO and, and the Australian Antarctic Division shows clearly um, from the isotopic ratios of, of um, the carbon dioxide that, that is caught in those bubbles in the ice cores that the cause of that rise of CO2 is is, um, is human emissions, is, is burning of fossil fuels. So we know that already from the ice cores. Um, the ice cores have been, you know, pivotal pivotal in, in our understanding of climate variability over those really long timescales. Now what we want to do is is the next big challenge in, in ice core science is, is to push the record back beyond a million years um, into a, a period called the mid-Pleistocene transition, if we want to get into the, the nitty-gritty, um, when Earth's climate state was different. And we don't yet have a, a complete understanding of why that change in the climate system occurred. Um, and the new ice core, in particular, measuring the gas concentrations uh, in the bubbles in that ice core, um, will help us understand why that climate transition occurred. And that's really valuable for the future because that gives us information to test our climate models that we're using to predict um, you know, where the climate system is headed uh, in the next century and beyond. Dr Joel Pedro, that is a fascinating insight into such an ambitious project. We'll be watching closely to see how you go with all of that and really appreciate you taking the time to explain it all to us. Thanks so much. Thanks very much for your interest.